Hello, people of Earth. Hello, people across all timelines and alternate realities. I'm Prince Dumi, and welcome to another episode of Writing Thoughts. Quests can be among the most fun types of stories to write and read, so today we'll be sharing 8 basic tips to help you better write your own quest stories. Of course, there are many, many ways we can do this, but I'm hoping that these basic tips will be helpful in providing stepping stones for you moving forward with your own quest stories. Tip number 1. Make the journey unpredictable, even if you know the destination. In C.S. Lewis's The Horse and His Boy, Shasta and Bree were fleeing Calumine in order to start new lives in Narnia. But along their journey, they unexpectedly ran into two companions headed in the same direction. On top of that, they discovered that the Calumine prince was even intending to invade Narnia and Archenland in secret. On top of that, Shasta even discovered that he was actually the long lost prince of Archenland. A simple story of a boy running away from an abusive father to live in a magical land where he could be free escalated into a war story with the fate of two kingdoms on the line. Another example is found in Attack on Titan. Since season 1, all the scouts wanted to do was reach Eren Yeager's basement in his old hometown and discover the secrets there about the titans in order to get a leg up on them and win the war against them. But Along their journey, they ran into all sorts of unexpected obstacles, like the female titan appearing and attacking scouts left and right, slaughtering them without a second thought, showing abilities and skills and intelligence that other titans just don't have. On top of that, a whole town of people was turned into titans that could even run around and roam at night, showing abilities that other titans don't have, and providing a new obstacle and new challenges and getting more soldiers killed. And as if that wasn't enough, they even had to deal with more soldiers among their ranks being titans, showing up unexpectedly, causing more trouble for them, and two of them even being the two titans who kicked down the walls that, that led the titans into their land in the first place. Tip number two. Use side quests to assist and add to the main quest rather than distract from it. Some books are a lot like Skyrim. They're filled with a bunch of side quests that are fun in theory but have nothing to do with the main quest so they end up messing up the flow, focus and even the momentum of your story rather than adding to it. You always want your side quests to add to the main one. In Rick Ryden's The Lightning Thief, Percy and Abed and Grover find themselves without money, food or way to continue on their quest so Ares, the god of war, picks that exact moment to show up feed them and provide them with supplies, information and transport to continue on their journey provided that they go on a quick side quest for him first. This side quest was not only made useful in moving the main quest along but it also helped Percy get a better handle on his powers, established an abet's fear of spiders and even helped set up Ares as the final boss Percy would face in an epic god vs demigod fight at the end of the journey. Tip number 3. Challenge your characters with their worst fears. This is a great way to increase tension for both the readers and the characters. As I mentioned in my previous tip, Annabeth Chase is deadly afraid of spiders. In many of the Percy Jackson books that we've seen her in, Annabeth is usually ready to face any challenge no matter how dangerous or frightening it is. She stabbed a cyclops in the foot when she was 7 years old, she easily swung across monkey bars that was hanging over a wide endless chasm when she was only 14 years old, and she's faced many, many types of monsters in combat. But when it came to spiders, she always flipped out and she was always completely useless anytime they were around. She lost her mind, she lost her cool, she lost her resolve and she ended up needing others to fill in the gap for her and she ended up needing others to end up taking the weight and to end up taking the reins and to end up getting her out of that situation so that she could be useful again. So with the knowledge that Annabeth was so afraid of spiders, it was a really, really big deal in the Mark of Athena when she had to face off against Arachne, the mother of spiders herself, without any backup, without any useful weapons and with her leg being broken. The tension leading up to that confrontation was felt throughout the whole quest and when she finally faced Arachne, she was in a higher state of fear than she had ever been in, in any of the other books, but she pushed through despite being injured. Despite being barely armed and despite being alone, she pushed forward with her fears and she used her big brain to outsmart and defeat the mother of all her fears. When Arachne was finally defeated, it was a relief not only for Annabeth but also for the reader because you felt so proud of her in that moment for facing her biggest fear and winning. Tip number 4. Use the moments between perilous adventures to bond the characters closer to each other and the reader. 
One of my favorite examples of this is in The Lightning Thief, when Percy, Annabeth and Grover snuck onto a truck courtesy of their side quest with Ares. This was the first time in the whole story that Percy and Annabeth properly spoke with one another without bickering. This was the first time we learned anything about her past and they truly became friends. Before, she had gone on this quest simply to test her own skills and see if she was worth anything as a hero. Now, she was willing to fight by his side no matter how the quest concluded. And as a bonus, we even got to learn why she freaked out so much around spiders in the first place. Tip number 5. Let the heroes face difficult decisions. These are the decisions that can test the hero's resolve. The difference and context of each decision will reveal something about the hero's character, forcing them to make sacrifices or even face temptations or deal with pressures that they're not normally accustomed to. One example of this is in The Lightning Thief. When Percy Jackson had to choose between giving Zeus's lightning bolts to Hades and getting his mother back or leaving his mother behind in the underworld and, and going back to Olympus to stop the civil war between the gods before it started. Another example is shown through the character of Aang in Avatar The Last Airbender. As the world's ultimate protector, Aang has had to face a number of difficult decisions throughout his journey as the Avatar, one of which was choosing whether or not he should even accept his destiny or run from it. Another difficult decision he had to make was choosing whether or not he should learn the elements one at a time while soldiers die every day waiting for him to be fully realized or whether or not he should find a shortcut and master the Avatar state regardless of the personal cost. He's even had to choose whether or not he should kill the main antagonist as everyone wants him to or whether or not he should hold on to his cultural identity, hold on to its doctrines that believing that all life is sacred and find a different way of saving the day while keeping everybody, including his enemies, alive. Tip number 6. Let the journey change your characters. The greatest example of this is found in the amazing redemption arc of Prince Zuko. In the beginning of his journey to capture the avatar to regain my honor, he was not only the antagonist, but he was also hot-headed, desperate for his father's love, conflicted, disrespectful, and could barely master even his firebending basics. By the very, very end of this very, very difficult arc, he teamed up with the main protagonist. He learned how to show compassion, comfort, and even sacrifice for his friends. He faced his abuser, realizing that his father's love was not something for him to earn, and he had come to even know great humility. On top of that, he even got to learn the original way of firebending from actual dragons and he even went toe to toe with his prodigy of a younger sister. Furthermore, he even developed the presence of mind to recognize that something was off with his sister's mental civility before their final showdown. Zuko's arc was really one of the greatest and most beautifully written redemption arcs ever. Tip number 7. Let the adventure teach the hero a lesson about themselves. In Rick Ryden's House of Hades book, Frank Zhang considered himself weak unworthy, pathetic, and worthless so many times despite his bulky frame and his ability to shapeshift into animals. But in the times of crisis that he went through in his adventure, he learned that he was not only a great strategist, but he also learned that he was a leader and capable of making sacrifices that nobody else could make. He also learned how to shoulder his own weaknesses upon himself instead of expecting his girlfriend to shoulder them for him. Tip number 8, we're finally there. Don't undervalue the damsel in distress. Do not undervalue your damsel in distress. Damsels in distress provide some excellent stakes for your story. They show a character's worth to the story and their level of importance to the other characters. A normally common collected character might lose their mind and grow desperate if their spouse, family member or best friend is taken away from them. And this will make your readers nervous because this character is normally never so unhinged and is never normally so nervous and that means that they're more capable of making more mistakes. A character might face their worst fears to rescue the damsel in distress and that can impress upon the reader just how important the character relationship is and cause them to even tensely cheer for the hero and to not give up and to keep pushing through and that will provide great satisfaction when they come out triumphant. Losing the damsel in distress might even mean losing the world because they're the key to saving everyone. Your damsel in distress doesn't even need to be a woman or a side character. Aaron Yeager is the male protagonist for Attack on Titan, but he's been kidnapped and rescued every single season. Aaron, someday I'll come back and save you from this. Even his own enemies want to rescue him. Both sides know that they have a chance of victory with Eren on their side, so his enemies are willing to kill anyone to have him and his allies are willing to sacrifice themselves over and over and over again in order not to lose him, placing the fate of their entire civilization in his hands. 
There are many more ways you can write a good quest story, but hopefully I've provided some great groundwork for you. Have you got your own good tips for writing a great quest story? Comment below. Did you like this video? Hit like, subscribe and comment below. Do you like my deep exotic sexy voice? Comment below, dang it. Don't forget to follow me on social media too. Peace out people of earth and remember, if you're going out on a quest on your own, never ever trust any lone woman you find in the middle of the woods. Chances are she'll kidnap you, cook you and eat you. I love you all and I'll chat with you next time.